my draft crush, uh, hopefully, and they may have to move up because he's he's getting too much buzz right now. Um, Eli Ricks, uh, who's somebody that I would love the 49ers to draft from Alabama, he transferred from LSU. Um, I think he's a true junior. Um, he didn't really start Guys, right away. That, real, real quick, I did want to ask you who is your draft yeah. crush? So it, it is, uh, it is it's Eli, Eli Ricks, Ricks and it. it it's Eli Ricks and, and it's Will Mallory from uh, Miami because I think everybody else is kind of focused on Sam Laporta. He's going to be – he's for the streets. They, he, the, the, the Niners have no shot at getting him. Um, Zach so. Koontz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I don't well, think he gets past Green Bay um, in, the, in the second round. I don't think he gets past them. Laporta, to me, I think the team, thing that – and again, very well could go second round. I think he has to get stronger. So – and he's not mm-hmm. like – what my guy Brian Peacock says, body beautiful, right? Like he's not the – Six four, six five, two hundred 255 pound tight end. He's like, you know, slightly, I don't want to say undersized, but he's like 245, uh, you know, 6'3, you know, um, you know, needs to be stronger. Uh, but he has a really good game. And I actually, there's a, a locked on 49 or not locked on 49, locked on network draft. I don't want to spoil who I picked for the 49ers. I picked 99, but I am going to spoil it. It's a Laporta. So, um, no, he was there. Oh, so he, if he makes it to 99, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is it's okay. So Love Laporta, he, his combine was out of control. He, he tested very well in terms of interviews. All the buzz around him was great. You look at the next guy, Zach Koontz, and he's the six seven guy who's super fast and everything. But I have an issue, and, and you can talk me through this a little bit. I see him at the combine, and he has the second fastest speed. I watch him play Croc, and he doesn't play as fast. At times, right? He looks a little bit slower getting in and out of breaks. And and for somebody who's 6'7", he shouldn't be that fast to begin with. But play speed and, and, and the combine speed is two different things for me. So that's kind of what I was noticing. Like him in and out of breaks, he's not as smooth. He's a bigger guy. He can get up the seam. And obviously when he finally gets going, he can be fast. But he doesn't have acceleration. Like his, that burst isn't there right away when I watch him run routes. What do you think about him? I think you're right with, with your assessment. And it's even wilder when you look at some of his combine testing where he had an amazing short shuttle and three cone where he's like, dang, how do you do so well? Especially at six foot seven. Like, I mean, this is a really big guy, six, seven, 255 pounds, ran into four fives. Um, the film doesn't match that. And I don't know if it's because of the system or scheme, like their offensive scheme where he kind of would start outside motion down, run a bunch of drag routes. Maybe there weren't a lot of things that truly challenged uh, his change of direction. Uh, you know, I, I we can go back to, uh, Jalen Hurd. I remember Jalen Hurd being really big. He had a great short shuttle. When you watch the film, you could see the short area change of direction. You could see the feet. Didn't quite see that with uh, uh, the big tight end out of Old Dominion. So I thought he struggled at the top of routes. I thought he struggled to throttle down on his routes. I thought he struggled to work away from guys. Um, it, it was He struggled so much that everything kind of ended up being contested and it was really difficult, I thought, to kind of throw the ball to him in certain areas where with somebody that big, you would think, hey, I just got to throw it in the area and he's going to come down with it. And that wasn't something I saw. So I'm kind of out on Kuntz. He would be more of a guy that I look at as like, man, if he's there in the sixth or seventh round, then I'll take a flyer on him because he does have a lot of ability and potential in him. But I, I think there are, there's a lot of work and development that has to be had. So if you are the 49ers and it's like, well, he doesn't have to be our tight end one right now. Uh, he could be our tight end three and we can continue to work with him on certain things. And then, Hey man, uh, you, you, you know, you have George Kittle take him under his arms, under his wing and Kittle works with him for a year or so. And he does off season stuff with uh, Kittle out in um, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, where he's working with that uh, trainer. Can't think of his name right now. Jay, Dang, can't think of the trainer's name right now. But I know uh, Kittle, you. Faith, huh? Tight end you? Nah, nah. Kittle, oh. Kittle goes to this guy uh, oh, okay. faithfully, a, a receiver. It's a like a receiver trainer, but he works mm-hmm. with the tight ends. And, I mean, like, the, he challenges their movement skills. He does a lot of really good stuff with them. So, you know, shoot, take him there. And that'll really help. So, But I think that would be, like, a project. So if you want somebody that has the potential to be, like, high upside, but just is kind of far away from that right now, at least for what I see on film. But, hey, man, got to take him under his wing then. Maybe Koontz is a guy that you would take in, like, the sixth round. I'm very glad that I you feel the same way I do. It makes me feel validated because, again, at the Combine, he's, he's just blowing people away. And it's funny how this works because at the Combine, those numbers can turn someone who doesn't have production in college – didn't necessarily put good things on film and it kind of swings their draft stock up because you people fall in love with the speed and, and their their RAS score and, and what they can do athletically. 
and it and it kind of takes people away from what's there on the film. Talking with so many people down there, the best part was learning how other people go about their evaluation and their process. People who are very respected and listening to them. And, and it all goes back to what they always say. Trust your eyes on the film. All of that athletic stuff is cool, but you should be able to see some of those things. And then again, when we're talking about third or fourth round range, you're probably going to have to evaluate these players in this fashion because they they generally aren't have they don't have a ton of production or they have things they need to work on. So that's what makes this process so much more fun for me because I have to dig in and do a little bit more work and, and try to try to look at everything and try to come up with the best evaluation possible. And I think that's the, the fun part about all this. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. So uh, real quick, we want to touch a little bit more on your draft crush a lot, Rick. So what do you like about him that you're seeing on film and how do you think he fits with the San Francisco 49ers? I, I just see a guy flexible in man and his zone. I don't see a burner. Like, he's not super fast, even though he ran very well at his pro day, which I was like, damn, What did he run on his pro day? I, I think it was like four, 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 five, seven or something like that. Like, okay. he, he didn't run that. He didn't, he didn't run that. Like, he didn't run at the combine. And, and the knock on him was straight line speed. And I, and I could kind of see that on film. But, Croc, what I noticed, man, and I, I promise you, I'm not trying to suck up to you by picking a cornerback. Like, I'm just telling you, like, I'm watching this guy. And I'm watching him stay in phase, mirror routes everywhere. He fires on the ball fast. Like if if he has an underneath route, he knows what he's reading the route. He's underneath and he fires to it and he can still break up the pass. I think all of these smarts put together with the way that he's flexible, man and in zone. I, I have I have a feeling he's going to be the guy that we look back in this draft and we're like, damn, how did everybody miss on this kid and let him slide this far? Now, remember, he transfers from LSU. He doesn't start in his third year um, at Alabama. He plays the last seven games. But those last seven games are littered with a guy who looks like he understands routes. He understands leverage. He's he's staying in phase. He doesn't panic. He has great ball skills. I, I walked away watching him cover corners. And he went to Bama, too. Like, that's another thing. It's like he's playing against the big boys. He's not, you know, again, I I don't like to say like, oh, he's playing in this division. It's not. But he went to Bama. So that's a name brand. He went to LSU. I just see a guy who was bouncing back from injury, somebody who kind of like fell in the weeds a little bit. And then when people get this idea that he's not fast, they start to lose sight of the yeah. other things that make corners special. And I think I see almost everything else aside from the speed. And speed doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a great corner. So I hope I, I, I was think- on there. Well, I think when it yeah. comes to Ricks, again, and I watched, uh, I've watched several corners. He is one of the corners that pops the most. Like when you watch him, right? If you just kind of erase everything that's been going on with him, you just watch his film. Like you said, that's what they say at the scout, at the uh, scouting combine tape. and senior. Role. Yeah. Like, what does the tape say? The tape says it's a very confident cornerback. He has good feet. He triggers extremely w- well. He plays with a ton of confidence. I, I mean, I love that. that. Like that's one of the first things that jumps out to me. He's uh, scrappy. He's aggressive. He makes plays. They call him Pick Six Ricks. And I watched him what have three pick sixes in one game in, in high school. He had multiple pick sixes his uh, freshman year at LSU. He was a, a, a freshman All American uh, playing in the SEC where you're going up against the top competition. Went to Bama and it just got weird. Didn't start for whatever reason. Maybe he was hurt. Maybe what you know, whatever's going on there. Seemed like maybe there was something about potentially in the doghouse with Nick Saban. I don't. I don't know. It got weird. But that first game he got on the field against, I want to say it was Mississippi State. Elias Ricks turned up. I mean, he he turned up and he was going crazy. Now, the 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 one thing that gives me pause is the cornerback position. You do have to be athletic. So the the, the testing for. A lot of positions, maybe you could overlook it, especially like the receiver position. It's like, ah, okay, whatever. But cornerback is one, depending on the scheme that you're going to be in, you do kind of have to test well. Or I weigh cornerback testing more than some of the other positions. And when you look at his, I'm going to share my screen with y'all right now. All right. When you look at his... R- RAS, so this uh, relative athletic score thing, and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this kind of floating around a little bit, but it's it's not great. It's it's pretty yeah. poor. I mean, he it, ran four six. So th- they have him listed at four six. Peacock said four five five. You said four five seven. I thought it was four five seven, but yeah, yeah. So they they, they have him at four six from his pro day. Uh, his three cone. I mean, this is as bad as it gets. A seven point four four. 
Like it, I, that's, I don't know if I've that. That's bad. That's just bad. And then when you look at you know vertical jump, thirty five inches, which is cool, but it's not great. Then you look at uh, height, weight, height, great weight. I don't worry too much about that, especially since I see like a physical brand with him. He has the long arms, but it's just this side right here where the speed and agility grades are just very low. And that's something that worries me just a little bit. So again, I try not to weigh too much on the testing, but that cornerback position, you, you kind of have to be a little bit more athletic. And, and for that reason, still really like him on film, but I would take him he'd still be more of a fourth, fifth round guy to me. Mm -hmm. And remember, there was a, was a Tarverius McFadden. He was a mm -hmm. guy who had eight interceptions as a sophomore and everybody's so high on him. And he ends up going undrafted. Well, between him and the kid, uh, Kevin Tolliver, who I really like Kevin Tolliver when he was coming out of LSU. But Tolliver didn't, he just, well, I'm just not going to run to 40. Right. He's like, well, what are you trying to hide? And then, you know, he ended up going undrafted. So we'll see what Ricks goes. He actually, you know, he has like a lot more hype and buzz than a lot of people. But we'll see as far as like the film, whatever was going on in Alabama, the testing, how that all comes full circle and where he ends up going. But I really do like him, though. That's the thing is, is returning from the injury and then that Nick Saban thing that you're talking about. It was weird because there was never any discussion as to why he wasn't playing. And then when he gets on the field, he immediately started to, to perform. So how much of that is him bouncing back from the injury? How much of that is just him trying to get himself back into shape and everything? And again, he doesn't go to the combine. He has, he has himself at the, the Alabama Pro Day. I just, again, when I was looking at his smarts and, and his route recognition and being able to, to jump routes and being explosive and fast, and like you say, and confident, right? Half the battle for, for corners is confidence, man. You could have all the athletic gifts, but if you're just like thinking you don't want the ball thrown towards you, that can really undercut your your success and, and the way you perform. So I just really liked – he looked like a guy that should be playing on Sunday. So this is the fun part about the evaluations. I see something. Someone else sees something else. You see something else. And then eventually, after we get a large enough sample size in the NFL, we can all come back and check our notes and say, well, I got this right. I got this wrong. This is And this is where I'm going to you know fix, fix my process and everything as well too. And you did mention wide receivers, and I did want to bring him up because – um, he's somebody who has a ton of production. He's actually familiar with Brock Purdy, um, Xavier Hutchinson. And he he kind of feels like he's going to go in the range of like Amon Ross St. Brown, where everybody was kind of just sleeping on him and, and, and he just was sitting around and he makes it and he has an immediate jump, can play in the slot. He has great catch radius. I think he's he's very fine with his route running. Not fast. I understand that portion of it. But he looks like one of those guys that understands the intricacies of route running and can win at the next le the next level. So that's one of the guys that when I was going through – see, the way I started scouting this time, Croc, is I was going through people's mock drafts. And I looked through the mock drafts, and then I say, okay, I'm going to watch this player now. And there's no better feeling, I think, Croc, than organically getting to an evaluation, right? I'm not swayed by something that somebody said. I didn't read something that somebody else said. I kind of came to this just by watching and writing down and watching as much as I can. So when he was drafted in one of the mocks, I was like, okay, well, let me take a look. I'm not familiar with um, Iowa State, but when I watched it, I just saw a guy that he had rapport with Brock, but he he has so much production. He's one of the most decorated receivers, right? He was like all Big 12, I think, uh, first and second team. But again, he just looks like a guy who understands how to get himself open, which which further weighs out the Trump. It trumps out the, the missing of certain aspects of your game, like speed and all of those things, when you know how to leverage cornerbacks and get yourself open.